about two o'clock in the morning, I'm awake, and there's thick evil in the room. Because something has had to come to me. It has had to come to me because I've challenged it by being there. And it has to come and try and demand that I submit to it. Otherwise, it loses its ground. Because uh, we have the authority. The more unhooked you are, the more you engage that. So it, it I and mean, this thick fear, it's like, wow, oh, it's tangible. It, it can, it's, like, it's like there's a shadow in the room, you know, the darkness enters. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not meant to, we're, we're not made for darkness. We're constantly in the light, we're in the day. And I'm and up there, looking at it, going, <laughs> what is trying to intimidate me? They do. They want you to get scared because if you're afraid, you're, in, you're worshipping it. You're banging your knee to it. So I'm there, waiting for it, waiting for it, knowing that this must be frustrating it, that I'm not reacting. I'm walking around going, Jesus, I love you, love you, oh, I love you. And then, then I see them. I see these three wolves um, circling around the room. Now, the, the walls of the room, when, when you start to switch more towards your spirit eyes, you see, and you get used to doing that. The walls aren't there, and I'm seeing these walls going around, three of them. And I, I sense what each of them does. I know that one of them is suicide and death. And um, I find out, I think two days later, that someone has just committed, almost committed suicide in the village, very small village, major shock for the village to have that the pastor was amazingly at the right place at the right time to stop this guy dying. But these things rule, they literally rule what goes on in this village. And they're circling me. And I, I, I engage these things for, for about two hours. This is, is this what we signed up for? Because <laughs> this is what you get. The more your heart gets free, they'll come to you, you'll experience stuff. They're dropping all sorts of thoughts into my mind. Why are, you, why are you bothering to do this, Paul? This is a waste of time. What are you? You're all alone here. It's just a, this, oh gosh, wouldn't you rather be home? All sorts of stuff bombarding into my head. They're, they then switch tactic and go, start to mock me. Who do you think you are to bring change here? Again, do I react? Do I argue as to why I, ha I have authority? No, just I have authority. So authority always sits down. Oh, it always relaxes. <laughs> Sitting there and waiting. Then after some probably half an hour, they switch gear again and they try the false repentance one. You ever had them do that? They go, but surely we can repent too, Paul. Surely we can change too. They really play head games. And I'm just walking through all this stuff. And eventually I sense the rising of the spirit and I'm seeing where they've managed to get their authority and I'm repenting on behalf of the, of the area. And, I, I, I write, and eventually I get a sense of now I can operate. So I, I take authority, I release, I release the decree of the Lord because I sense it's being released. That, that in a courtroom in the heavens, been released, and I take authority and I watch these three walls go. And I go to sleep. Unknown to me, they leave my room and they go straight for the intern who struggles with rebellion. She has a horrific nightmare. Terrifying. Nightmare. <coughs> and she wakes up with, in, in a cold sweat and she's sharing a room with one of the other interns and she doesn't know whether to, what, whether to try and go back to sleep or wake up this other intern because she's terrified. And she feels the Holy Spirit saying, wake her up, wake her up. So she goes over to the other intern and wakes her up and says, I just had a terrible nightmare. I can't, can't explain it all, but can you pray? So this intern, for an hour, sits up with her and prays and gets, by word of knowledge, her dream and, and starts to take authority over three wolves <laughs> that have come into the, the area. And um, goes, the, the nightmare is she's in a... Um, a classroom environment, a, a retreat, and I'm there, and the other interns are there, and others are there, and the police break in with guns, and they say, get under the tables, there's someone coming, there's a murderer coming. Now, I don't know if you know, that's that, remember that event in Norway? 
things don't just happen. Mm-hmm. So get under the tables and say, there's a murderer coming. Get on, and, and, and she's going in the dream to them. Don't be silly. We're safe here. This is, this is a Christian thing. Well, what are you talking about? And they go, no, seriously, some, get under the tables. So they get, everyone gets under the tables, <laughs> including the police. And then in comes this, this guy with a machine gun who says, I'm going to heal you all. Meaning he's going to mow them down with a machine gun. But he's going, I'm going to heal you. Except he's wearing a face and that face is mine. It looks like me. I've walked in. And this is what he's screaming at her inside. You've joined a cult. You've joined a cult. You've joined a cult. And she's woken up terrified, convinced she's joined a cult. Yet something in her is going, no, no, that can't be. That can't be right. That can't be right. So this other intern prays with her, it takes about an hour, and she comes to peace and rest. When you start to, uh, when you start to deal with your heart, you'll engage with stuff will shift. You'll be terrified to the enemy. Now, because she was able to go to that intern and come to rest, they had to leave. That that those walls left. And my goodness, the atmosphere totally shifted the next day in the classroom. 